On today's show, a robot samurai bests its human master in a duel. Oh, and boy, what a weekend. What a lovely weekend because robots faced off against each other and only, I think, four. Only four won. And lastly, Apple threw their developers conference. Yes, we're going to recap WWD. It's Tomorrow Daily. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tomorrow Daily. You're the best talk show in the, in the whole world. I'm your host, Ashley Skeda. Joining me as always. So you... Uh, I'm sorry. I just... You okay? It was so boring. Right. Okay. So asleep. what's great is I didn't watch it. So apparently that's good for me. But we're going to recap what happened. I'll tell you all about it right now. Okay. So a lot of people have been saying What happened today? What Google, is it? Google I.O. wasn't very exciting. Right. Well, uh, I hate to break it to you, Apple fans. WWD Z Z Z Z Z was all not all that exciting either. But there was some new things that we can tell you about that might be coming to your iPhone, iPad, or your MacBook if you are so inclined. Um, okay, so let's start off with iOS nine. So iOS nine, uh, lots of stability, lots of fixes, uh, lots no no major visual changes. That was iOS eight. That was the big visual change. Um, they have a new UI, some responsiveness to some very specific requests. For example, you can ask Siri, show me photos from Utah last August or remind me to grab my coffee from the roof of the car when I get in uh, okay. you can ask you can ask for these reminders like so for right now uh, Siri has not been very great I made a joke on Twitter they were like oh Siri's taken over 1 billion requests and I'm like and she has not been able to answer <laughs> 999,999,999 of them um, so they have this thing called proactive assistant uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. And that's that's the whole, like, you can ask uh, Siri. It's like sort of proactive. It's going to guess kind of what you're doing, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, And you can also ask things like, uh, they did a thing with Siri, say like, hey, play the song from Selma. And so you're not asking for something very specific, but it knows what you want. It knows the specific song from Selma you want? Because that's sort of the song everybody asks for, is Glory oh. by Common. Okay, so yeah, that, yeah, then it was like, oh, yeah, the song from Selma, okay. It just, what are they played off of? Oh, okay, so they played it off of Apple Music. So this is a service. Boom, transition, go ahead. Great transition, Apple Music. Uh, 10 bucks a month for a single subscription. This is uh, their acquisition of Beats. This is now finally rolling out as an Apple product. It is gonna be, like I said, 10 bucks a month for a single subscription, so similar to Spotify, but uh -oh. $14.99 for a shared family account for up to six people. Get out of here. So which they really, they're shaking that up. So I, I would imagine Spotify Mo will probably respond in kind with some sort of multiple account access for a, a higher rate. R okay. R Rdo does this, so they do too. I'm sure that there's a, a, a like a CNET video that goes deeper into this. Yeah, we have but, tons of coverage on all of WWDC. But you're very coming over depth. everything. Yeah, I okay. just want to give you guys the, okay. the, the, the sort of broad strokes here. Okay. Um, and they're also going to do something called Beats One, which is going to be a global radio station. They're doing a thing called Connect which is kind of like a social media network, but uh, inside Apple Music just for artists. So uh, they showed a, a clip where they were like, oh, let's go see what uh, Pharrell is doing, or let's go see what this artist is doing in the studio. And it shows this like beautifully curated page of the pictures they've been posting on social media. Uh, they can do things like lyrics, they can pit, put up audio clips, they can do little videos, um, all sorts of stuff. And so, and they, they curate it all together like we're seeing on the screen in this beautiful little setup uh, where you're able to see all the stuff that's kind of going on in their your, your favorite artist's career at this time, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, so not not quite like Ping, which was a big fat nightmare and Jeez, failed. I don't even remember that. Failed okay. very quickly. <laughs> um, all right, that so, seems whatever, but that's okay. Apple Music. You're going to get a three-month trial. It launches at the end of June. It's free trial for three months. And then... Everybody that has an Apple gets a free trial. Free trial. And then on Android, they're going to release Apple Music in the fall. So they're going to have Apple Music on, on Android devices if you... Uh, if Smart. You, maybe if you have a MacBook and you use iTunes, but then you have an Android device, you've been looking to kind of switch over to uh, Apple's ecosystem in terms of iTunes and all that stuff. Real quick poll. Uh, uh, Logan, would you likely drop Spotify for this? No, I'm not doing it. He says no. No offline playlists. So, oh, my God. So here's the thing. I have been hearing conflicting reports about no offline playlists. Uh, I've heard that maybe they just glossed over that because that was just sort of a standard feature. 
Uh, but they did make mention of the fact that if you really like a song in the streaming service in Apple Music, you could tap on buy and buy it immediately, like in iTunes. So you have to own the music. No, not necessarily. No, I don't think so. Hmm. But I, but they they made mention of that feature. But the thing is, is I don't think that means no offline playlists very specifically. So all right, stay well, tuned. I'm sure they CNN. break it. I'm sure they have yeah. it on the. We'll break on it the all video. down okay. for you. Okay, so we'll so, so any anything else we're talking about at this thing? Uh, Maps got public transit info. So for anybody who relies on the subway to get to work, school, it whatever. It didn't have that before. No, no. A lot of so a lot of people have been using Google Maps. There's a real. Um, oh yeah, it, no, yeah, you're right. It you're did. Right. It did to an extent, but it wasn't. It wasn't very good, and well, I mean, a lot of Apple Maps isn't very good. I was, I was laughing. I mean, I also joked around about how I said, "Cue the deluge of people who accidentally got sent to the wrong place because they trusted Apple Maps or their public transportation." It just happened to me the other day. I was joining the YouTube space, and it threw me like a mile away, and then made me track all the way back. It's and like, really I weird. didn't even make it. I passed right. I know. It's stupid. It's insane. Uh, they also showed off a thing that is very Flipboard-like called News. It's going to, I'm assuming, replace News Stand. Um, and there, it's basically, it's like Flipboard. You have all these different content creators, and you can see all these like sort of curated, really pretty layouts for articles and okay. features and things like that. Um, they have uh, multitasking on the iPad, which is a really big deal. A lot of people have been asking for that. Here it is on video. Uh, Craig Federighi, also known as Hair Force One, because his hair is so delightful, uh -huh. uh, showing off multitasking on the iPad. It's only going to work on the Air and the Air 2, as far as I'm aware. Uh, for now. What the? Why? Uh, well, because it's. I think it has to do with processing power. It has to be able to deal with two different windows. Um, but he talks about how, yeah, like so you have these windows. You can pull up different things. Um, very similar to what we've seen in a few different Android tablets. And also, I mean, the Surface Pro does something similar. But it's kind of a little computer as opposed to just, just a tablet. Um, but yeah, you can see this is how it works. It's pretty simple. It looks pretty straightforward, easy to use. Um, and I, uh, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But unfortunately, I only have an iPad Mini, so this will be completely worthless to me when it comes out in iOS nine. Um, Passbook is now called Wallet. They've changed Passbook to Wallet, uh, so you can use Apple Pay. But it's also they're like we kind of feel like it's kind of graduated beyond just you know like little passes for stuff. So now this is like your wallet. We have Apple Pay in there. Your your cards are in there now. Your rewards cards are in there now. All this okay. other stuff. Right. Uh, Apple Pay also coming to the UK. So congrats, United Kingdom. You're gonna get to pay with your phone and. And all those checkout clerks are going to look at you like you're a wizard yeah, because when, they are always confused when I use Apple Pay. Yeah. They're like, I don't think that's going to work. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, see, it worked. It's fine. And they're like, how did you do that? And I'm like, how, did nobody train anybody on this? You guys this? have really good crisps over wow. in um, London. I love anyway, the so is that it? prawn cocktail crisps. The best crisps in the world. Oh, yeah, um, I'm going to try those. Oh, you absolutely have to. And then lastly, OS 10, 10.11. Uh, is El Capitan. That's the name of the of the opera. So we have Mavericks, Yosemite. Uh, it's going with the whole uh, places in California. So here is El Capitan. There's some performance upgrades. Um, and the, the, mouse is huge. the right. public beta will be available in uh, July, as well as for the first time, iOS 9 will have a public beta. All so right. you'll be able to try it out. So, you know, it was boring in a relative sense. I still think Google I.O. was way more boring. I would At least they say, introduced the music service thing. Like, that's fair. Jimmy Ivan came out. You know that was fine. I, I think that they were, I think they were both like, improving on things that already existed. Yeah. So it was like these are great. Th these are all great things. Like don't get me wrong. These are all awesome. I'm excited for all these things, and I'm excited for all the things that Google is doing. But it it feels like it was a lot of like iterative sort of. Okay, well we have this, and now we're just gonna polish it up even more. Uh, on both ends, like Google and Apple. Yeah. So hey, maybe you know we realize that not every single one of these is going to be like groundbreaking. Well, it's just go in with like just you know tempered expectations. I think so, yeah. and I think this is sort of it speaks to this kind of entitlement to innovation that I talk about a lot, where it's like people feel like we need to have innovative devices like every year. People get mad when their devices do not like blow their minds, and it's like it doesn't have to. Like you Porsches generally speaking, have not majorly changed the design of their car. Like, they have improved it little by little every year, and it's they're amazing now, but it doesn't need to be a completely different car every time. It can still be great, but it doesn't have to be so totally different that, you know, you don't have to go to the other side to I'd make it make a splash. I'd buy into that metaphor. I'd buy into that metaphor. You don't have to go to the other side. Nice. You don't have to. Yeah, you can, you can make it better as you go like this. It doesn't have to be like, we're here, and now we're way over here. No, you don't have to do 180. To impress. I think it was good. It was fine. It was acceptable and satisfactory, I'm sure, in all the ways that Apple people would like. 
Um, but I felt the same way about Google I.O., which was like, it was, it was good. It was good. I think there were some good updates. I think people will be very happy with what they're going to get in their operating system of choices upgrade later this year. But other than that, we're done here. Cool. That All was right. WWDC. What would you get out of 10? Hmm, 6.5. I think you gave it a seven to the Google I/O, actually. Yeah, six point five from a seven, like right. right around. I would say right around there. All right. There if you they had go. brought up, you know, they kind of forgot about Dre. If I'm being honest, they did not bring out Dr. Dre. They forgot about him. So the DARPA Robotics Challenge happened this weekend. Boy, is that a really cool competition! So if you don't know, the DARPA Robotics Challenge is everybody brings their robots together. And they come try and compete in this obstacle course. I love this. All different designs of robots. You, just trying to like complete this obstacle course. It's really interesting. We got a hilarious video of a whole bunch of robot fails. I cannot wait. That's coming up. Just wait for that. Yes. But well, let's talk about the winners. Okay. We want to talk won? about Team Cast from South Korea. They won two million dollars with their robot because their robot is a transformer in a way. It. it it can like transform to, to uh, like move differently. Oh, okay. It's really cool. Um, it's one of only three robots that managed to complete the course, so it's really impressive. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna do the transforming. I love in that they have second. Optimus Prime if you're watching, like, around. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna do the transforming in just a second. Uh, it got through the obstacle course in under 45 minutes, which I guess is pretty good. That's I think that's yeah. pretty good. All okay, yeah, check there. it. This is their robot right here. Um, wow, if you didn't look know, look at this thing twisting. Oh my gosh, look yeah. at it. You see, it it its legs bent it backwards. moves different. Like it changes the way that it moves. Um, and the reason—let let me give you the goal. Okay. The reason yeah, why this why this, this thing existed. Happening? This contest was opened after the earthquake and nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan, in 2011. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. So they—the whole point is to create a robot that can complete tasks during a disaster strike. So it makes sense that they make an obstacle course and the one that can make it through can transform That it has to be super versatile, right? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. No, that does make sense. And I love how they're saying like bipedal walking is it, they, this can be really kind of precarious, but then they also have, like you were saying, it transforms, it has wheels and it can just wheel itself around quickly. And theirs is one of the best looking. There was a lot of ones that were kind of like janky. They had like, you know, big giant battery pack behind them. Uh, the second place team was team THMC, they had a robot based on Boston Dynamics Atlas robot. There was a lot Which of the seen, Atlas, yeah. there's a lot of Atlas robots modifications in there. I was gonna say, yeah, I've heard that like a lot of these entrants to the competition will take a robot like Atlas, or there was another robot too that they, they take it as like a base model and then they add on to it or they change it up to where it's like their own robot, but they yeah. use that as sort of a jumping off point. It's pretty cool. That is pretty amazing. But uh, also, yeah, a, com a robot competition so that we can have a better future. And unfortunately, like only three of them made it through the, the course. But $2 million to uh, South Korea, who now beat us at robotics and StarCraft. Yeah. Now and I League of Legends. Geez, they're just and crushing pretty us. much every Now, this, this South Korean team, Team Cast, is, that's pretty amazing. Congrats. That, in a weird way, brings us back to the, the, uh, the question of the day, the hashtag of the day, for the last article. Yeah, that's true. Whoops. We forgot Just to kidding. mention the hashtag of the day. So let's go back and mention the hashtag of the day. Okay. So, Which so is hooray for robots. Hooray for robots. But but TDWWDC fifteen one five, um, and tell us are you are you angry? Are you bored? Are you sad? Are you hungry? How do you feel? About what? what was about, your response the, to WWDC's oh, announcements? To WWDC. Like, are you really feeling it? Is there something that maybe was missing? I personally would have liked to have seen the Apple TV get a refresh, a new set top box. So would it? So would a. Um, our, our old friend Brian Tong. I'm yeah. sure he was super let down. Um, BT, because I saw him, because they have the live stream thing, if you too. don't know. And they were in that little sound booth, and Brian Tong was like this the whole time. He was, like, I think sad. he was bumming. He was bumming there was no Apple TV, but he talked about it on Apple Byte. He was like, yeah, there's not going to be Apple TV this year. And I have a feeling a lot of that has to do with it. I think a lot of people are speculating light agreements with studios for streaming and all this other stuff, like to have all these sort of, you know, companies and partnerships where you're streaming content. Time's running out. We'll Every, see. We got Google Chrome. We got, you know. I know. There's some great Kindle choices. And, Roku. You got Roku. You got a lot of set-top boxes. And just using your phone. But Apple, I mean, 
I think this is a really good chance for Apple to kind of take that set-top box area out of the hobbyist section because right now they're all these sort of like $100 boxes. So yeah. You have Amazon Fire TV, mm -hmm. Apple TV, Roku. You got all these boxes that are about $100. Chromecast, a little bit different, but still like $35, so cheap. But then, you know, maybe you do something like Xbox One where you're able to actually plug your cable into Apple TV. And then it's like you can also watch all of your cable subscription. I'm sure they've got a lot of great things. And yeah, so saying. we'll see if Hurry that up. comes to pass. But yeah, it's going to have to happen relatively quickly. So what about you? Is there anything you wanted Apple to show off? I just wanted the Apple TV, to Apple be honest TV. with you. Yeah, and I also want them to introduce some sort of VR headset or AR thing. Like, yeah. I know that they probably just started working out. They're like, oh my God, everybody's doing this. We gotta do this. We, we gotta, gotta do it. Guys, we gotta they do this. They did buy an AR company. I wanna say they acquired them maybe a week or two ago. So, that was the rumor. Yeah, but I, I, I'm I, sure we're like, that's gonna be the next, it's a bit like the eye hood thing. Yeah, of course. Well, then of course, like the Apple car is a thing. They were saying that's gonna, happen in the next like five to ten I do years. not want an Apple car. You don't want that's, an Apple car? Uh, that's, the, that's the line for me, all right? So you draw the line? I don't need Apple everything. I only have this. I don't need to be like driving around in a car and Siri and this and the computer and the headset. No, too much. Cars too far. Tell me about Samurai Robots. Um, You're going to flip out like a ninja when you see this. Uh, this video is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, can we just transition as meanwhile in Japan? Meanwhile in Japan. As we like to say. Mono Man MH24 is a robot that was designed by Japanese engineers uh, to mimic the sword moves of a samurai master. Yes. And so what they did was they took this robot, which is just one big robot arm. It's not like a, you know, it's not like Atlas where it's, you know, walking around swinging a sword like a knight of the round table. Sure. Uh, they tracked the movements of real life samurai master. Here he is, Isao Machi. And they uploaded those moves right into the robot. So they tracked all this stuff. And this guy, is he's got world records. He's a world record holder. Uh, this, this guy is a, an amazing art, uh, sword master. This guy's an amazing samurai sword master, OK? And then what they did was they uploaded all those moves into the robot. And then they did a duel between the two of them. And the duel was not them swinging swords at each other because, wow, that would be really dangerous. Yeah, I think uh, you'd lose. But it was a whole bunch of trials. They did four different uh, challenges, basically, of diagonal cuts. And then there was like, you know, you'll see the different kinds. And they're like, OK, so you have to do all these cuts. And the robot would mimic that. And then it was that was sort of they would score all these things. And so the robot beat him. I think this is the best story. It's of the, kind of, of my the, favorite. Of the episode. I'm gonna be I honest know. with you. This like, video this is, is better than the press conference. Unbelievable. Yeah. Like I could watch this for hours. Why didn't they bring this robot out this on is, stage at WWDC? This is, I don't know. This is crazy. Is he not a fit? Like I'm just going for like honor here. Is he not mad that like it's taking away the art form? Of I sort don't know. Like, I'd love I would, to ask. Like, I, if there was a host robot, I don't think I'm good, but I'd, I'd be concerned. like, you don't understand the art of hosting. <laughs> um, so but, they got, like, horizontal cut? Okay. Oh, crazy. by the way, can I just mention, this guy, this samurai master, can hit a fried shrimp in half flying 80, as it flies 80 miles an hour yeah. through the air. P.S. Right. A fried shrimp. A little fried shrimp. He can hit it like a baseball bat, but just slice it in half as it's going 80 miles an hour through the air. So this guy yeah, that's a is not a joke. Okay. Like, he is... Serious Swordmaster. But yeah, I don't know how he feels about having his moves uploaded to a robot. And then the robot beat him in a duel. They even did a thousand cuts. And my favorite part of this entire competition was at the very end, they bowed to each other. The robot bowed at him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just took a drink while the screen was off and I almost spit he up. He almost choked. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to the, do that. The, the, look, he bowed again. I'm going back to this. He what? bowed what? out. Watch. They're going to bow at each other right now. Look, it's a mutual respect. That's no. The best. He bowed out of honor. The robot bowed because he was programmed to. No. No honor. The robot this is, respected him. This is cool. I saw Tomorrowland this weekend, but I'm still mad about that. <laughs> this is better than all of that. I'm just um, mad. I'm just mad. I'm scared. <laughs> so fortunately, uh, the robot again was. It was uploaded. It was programmed to do all those things. So it did not learn to right. use the sword in such a great way. Exactly. So we can. 
rest easy for tonight knowing that this robot is not going to go on a murdering rampage. Really cool video, though. Good but find. So awesome. I like that. But yeah. now we have my robot video that I was talking about earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to so do that. So we're going to come back with your user feedback and, and all that fun jazz that we have afterwards. But before we go, this is from the DARPA Robot Challenge this weekend. Here are all the fails. And we're running long. We are running very long. So, so can, we, can we? Yeah, it's time for Back at Her Haggard. Go. Okay, people are going nuts for this on Kickstarter. It's called Hydrate Me. This is a smart water bottle. How weird is that? It's already weird. Go. Super weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, it keeps tabs on your drink, your water drinking throughout the day. Uh, this is not that. This is the this. So this is yeah, the prototype. Yeah, that's pretty um, stupid looking. Yeah, very dumb. Uh, but keeps tabs on your water drinking throughout the day and then tells you when you need water by glowing. There's an LED light that glows. I want this so bad. Okay, I know. I knew you would like this. Kale drinks like eight gallons of water a day. Like Water so is so important. Yeah, it's it so is. important and it's the most under... Okay, keep going. It holds 24 ounces of water. It has one year of battery life and the battery is very replaceable. They say it's a battery you can find at any like drugstore. So probably some kind of watch battery. Um, it is dishwasher safe, which I really like because a lot of the uh, metal ones like Zoji Rushi and Swell and all of those, you can't put in the dishwasher. You can't dishwash them. Uh, and it comes in five colors. It talks to your wearables too. And this is the thing I really like about it. So if you're exercising, it actually adjusts and knows you need more water. And it'll tell you like, hey, you need more water. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, yeah. So I thought you would really like this. Um, it's also really beautifully designed. I just like that it is very um, plain. It's not like ostentatious. It's very, so yeah, there's a glowing right there telling you, hey buddy, drink drink some water. I'm glowing. I, yeah, this is great. I think I think just drinking more water is just a nice addition. It helps you sleep better. Yeah. It makes your skin look Hydrate. better. You, you you lose bags under your eyes. You, you you know your body likes it better. You digest better. That's so true. this may seem small, and you may think Kale's dumb. He likes water bottles. Well, I but do. it's pretty great. And so uh, I just like the whole thing about it saying like, oh, you're exercising. You need more water. Yeah. Like I'm realizing from your Fitbit or whatever that you're exercising. So now you need more water. Now they need to find a way to make it so that it tracks when you're drinking a lot. And then it's like, yo, you need to drink some water. That would be amazing. You are getting drunk and you need hydration. We should make a wearable that tracks your blood alcohol level and talks to the app. Mine would be like, start alarm sound is okay. Cool. So how much did you pay? One year battery life? Mm-hmm. $30? Okay. So on Kickstarter, it's 45 One now, year battery life, though. That being said, ships December this year. Uh, one year battery life, but the thing is, is you don't have to recharge it. That was their big thing, was they were like, we don't want you like having to recharge your water bottle every yeah. night. It's dumb. So like, you have this little battery. It's like a watch battery, and then you just replace it after Okay, cool. For like five bucks. You like, said $45? Yeah, $45. I'll definitely bucks. do this. Ships out in December this year. And they asked for thirty-five thousand. There's thirty-five days left in the campaign. They have over two hundred thousand dollars. So they're doing just great. Cool. I can't wait for this um, to exist. I agree. I say you back, back it, as well. Back it, so Logan. Totally on this. Back it. Okay. So there you Everyone's go. Everyone's in. It's already on the market now. Go get it. Go All right. Get it. So now it's time for your user feedback. Last week, we asked you guys to talk about the Disney research plan to add walking robotic characters into the parks. Oh, yeah, um, the terrifying robots that yeah, look at Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. We asked you guys to take this as a photo challenge and send over images of children that you think they are giving a face that would be a, an appropriate reaction to and seeing. That was a really good response. Very good response. Um, so Mitchell wrote in, and here's Mitchell's. <laughs> yep, it's just Chucky. Terrifying Chucky. Nice. Joe, this here's Joe's. Which he sent in a picture with his kid. <laughs> I just love that. Took a selfie. Way to I, go, Joe. Listen, I'm as surprised as your baby. Like, that's hilarious. J.L. Fox wrote in and sent this. <laughs> 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 Little Brooklyn Nine-Nine happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, Gail wrote in and sent over this. Oh, hey, there's Pooh. Wait, what? Yeah! Like, it's screaming, <laughs> which I love. 
Uh, and then Justin wrote in and said, to my geeks, uh, tomorrow daily I present the sketch out kid on Disneyland. He knows what's up. I love it. He's just like, I don't think so. <laughs> and then lastly, James emailed us and said, love the show. And then that was the picture that he sent. It was a very surprised baby. There was a lot more, actually. There, there was a lot. And also, I might add, very shocked that the majority of you did not send in crying children, which I thought would be the number one image. It was mostly just surprised faces. True that. But I was expecting, like, terrorized, uh, traumatized babies. Yeah. So. I don't know. I think kids these days missed. are... I think they've seen some messed up stuff. They've seen some stuff, so. guys. They've been places. They've done things. Now it's time for our last piece of user feedback, which is... Our phone tagger for the day. There you go. I don't know why I did this, because it's like that's a normal camera with a viewfinder. But no, then I do it with the, I guess you do it with your you phone. The volume. You touch the battery. You're so hard on yourself. The volume it's, just, it's just a gesture, yeah. Danny wrote in and said, hey, first time emailer, long time watcher. I love your show and I watch it all the time. Well, here's my picture. It is a wonderful picture of the Canadian Parliament in Ottawa. I took it right after my 10K race, which I crushed. Yeah, you get that water bottle we talked about. Hope you enjoy it. So that's Danny's picture. Look at that amazing picture. It's colorful and the rays of light. I mean, gosh, you must have been, you must have thought the entire world was celebrating you finishing your 10K. That's a good way to put it. Because that's what it looks like. How does the one plus one get a photo like this? I mean, it does a really good job. It has a great camera sensor. It has a good sensor. Okay. It's got a good lens in there. All right. Uh, but yeah, wow, really nice picture. Great work, Danny. Great job. Love Good job it. on the 10K. Yeah, and nice job on the 10K. We're really proud of you. Uh, if you guys want to send in your photography, send us a little story, your picture, and what device you took it on to tomorrow at CNET.com. Uh, and you can also send us all sorts of stuff on social media. We are tomorrow daily on pretty much every major social media site. Um, and if you can't find us, just go find us on Twitter. Yeah. Well, you said what I was going to say. Oh, okay. All right. What about what about YouTube, iTunes and YouTube? You just said just look on those, look on the things. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. you can, yeah. And plus, if you're watching on YouTube, you're already there. You know, you know so. the drill, guys. You okay. know the drill. Like, right. favorite, subscribe, comment, whatever. All that good stuff. Uh, if you want to come harass us on the internet, I'm at Ashley Esketh on Twitter. I thought you already said this. No. And I'm at Kale Anonymous. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another, I don't know how to end it. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new dog and a weird, wonderful science fact and science fiction smashed together in your face and being awesome. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.